So, hi everyone, apologies for that last minute change. We were having some technical issues getting into the live event. So, uh, thank you for, for joining us. And, and those of you who uh, didn't see the link, uh, you'll get the recording. So, uh, we'll get through this uh, pretty, pretty short and sharp today. And thank you all for your time. And what we thought we'd focus on is really about what we're seeing in our customer base globally um, around the use of Teams, which I'm sure, as you've heard a lot of over the last. Uh, last few weeks of, of this event and also in your own organizations is the, the explosive growth that's come about because of the disruption to work that the COVID situation has caused. We're seeing customers who, you know, had a three year program of work to deploy things like Teams uh, literally rolling it out in two weeks or less. Um, but we're also seeing that for a lot of users, they're not yet connecting the dots around what they can actually use it for beyond just video meetings. And it'd be interesting uh, at the end of this short presentation to have a, just a discussion and, and hear, hear what you're or hearing your organizations about Teams. And we hear things like, oh, should I use Teams or Zoom? Um, and that tells me that they're just thinking of video conferencing and meetings as opposed to the other stuff, which is to be expected when it's uh, when it's just uh, plonked on you as a user and you it's a total new way of potentially working. It's how do you make sense of it all? So what we, what we thought we'd do is really talk about that next phase. And right now we're working with customers uh, in all parts of the, the globe around how they move beyond just being uh, meetings and really start to get the business value out of the platform uh, that Teams is, because it's a very, very powerful, feature-rich platform, a whole bunch of stuff where you can do with it. But if you don't necessarily have a plan um, and you don't necessarily think about how it fits within your your users' work life, then it can also be a, a big distraction or just another uh, area of bunch of siloed collaboration and information sharing. So just a little bit about us, uh, LiveTiles, we build uh, software products that um, go into all sorts of sectors, such as the healthcare, all sorts of uh, organisations where uh, our technology is used by more than 10 million people around the world. Uh, we're recently listed as the fastest growing tech company um, and we're publicly listed on the Australian Stock Exchange, but we're, we're still in startup mode. We, we're still doing a lot of new stuff um, and we've got people spread around the world here. here in Australia. I myself, a beautiful day down here in Hobart, Tasmania, um, but we're in uh, all, all up the East Coast. Um, and then we also have the United States, Denmark, Netherlands, Switzerland and the United Kingdom. So what we're going to touch on is, is five core areas um, that we'll talk on. So one is how do you plan for success for the outset? And we've got some uh, pretty unique approaches to that that we've been using very, very successfully uh, with our customers, which I'm going to quickly show you. And, and the great thing about that is it's available free of charge. So uh, if you like what you see, we can, we can look to get you going pretty quickly on that. We're then going to talk about one of the biggest issues we're seeing in our customer base is, okay, so if everyone's now in Teams and that's where they're going to do their work, what about the corporate systems? What about in particular the communications function and how do you get to the eyeballs of your users when they're potentially you know, working within a channel, within a team, um, and you don't necessarily know how to get to them? So we've got some stuff around that we'll show you that we use ourselves. Um, how can you start to unify the applications and systems so people aren't constantly context switching? So they're not in teams getting stuff done, working as part of their project or their uh, process team or their department or whatever it may be, and then they get a notification for a system somewhere and they have to jump off and go and do something in that system and then come back to the context they were working in. So uh, what can we do about that? We'll touch on some really cool new stuff that we've been working on around our recorded meetings, uh, and I'll quickly show you that. And finally, um, how can you keep touch base and keep in touch with your, your users, your colleagues, your staff uh, across teams really simply, really easily uh, beyond just the classic doing surveys, that type of stuff. And we've got uh, a, a nice little uh, feature that we're, I'm going to demonstrate to you. And hopefully, if once again, if it interests you, we can dive a bit deeper into it uh, at another point in time. So planning for success. Um, one of the things that prior to COVID we saw was a lot of organisations embarking on those real big programs of work with adoption, uh, governance, change management programs, which was um, all warranted and all fantastic. And then COVID happened and it all went out the window. 
And unfortunately, we've seen organisations really struggle where they've just had to turn teams on or similar, could have been Zoom, could have been Slack, could have been any number of different types of tools, just had to turn them on and make them available. Um, and the ability to plan uh, and to manage that process so that you get the best value has, um, has just dropped uh, by the wayside. But it's a really important thing to, to consider still being able to do. But obviously in the current climate, doing it with traditional workshops, um, spending weeks or months of requirements, gathering and analysis, et cetera, is, is just not feasible and, and highly unlikely to, uh, to uh, support you well. So it just so happens that prior to COVID, we, we were doing some stuff around how do we gamify that whole process? And we actually built, and I've got a little box here, not sure if you can see it, built a little card game, a physical card game that we were using, which at the time was a fantastic idea in the current climate, pretty useless. But we've just recently digitized that game and we're running that with customers where they've got teams in place. As I say, they're using it for meetings, et cetera. And they're now looking to how they go beyond that and how they do it at scale. So what we do is we run uh, free workshop sessions with these customers, with the business users, and we engage them in a really fun visual manner that focuses on the process or the use cases that their teams, their departments, whatever it may be, they need. Not focused on the features and functions of the technology. As I said, Teams has a lot of stuff, but really focused on, okay, how would this work, et cetera. And then you go from that into a formal plan of attack. So we've got a, what we call our Teams Planner, a really simple little tool for capturing that to a more detailed level. It has some uh, graphical representations that you can see here in, in the screenshot. Um, you know, just highlighting things like, you know, 46% of your planned teams say they're going to contain sensitive information. Now that's an issue potentially if, you know, 90% of the teams are saying they're gonna be public access, for example. Um, another one we see classically is teams who strongly believe they need external collaboration, so external guest access. Well, if IT is turning that off, um, you have a conflict of need there, the need to protect versus the need to collaborate externally. And there's no right or wrong, but it's about highlighting that and then being able to work back to say, okay, which teams uh, have that issue and how, how might we mitigate that? So I'll quickly, uh, rather than go through everything, I'll just quickly jump in and show you quickly what that is about. And basically we call it the Teams game. It's web-based, um, you're up and running really, really quickly and we facilitate this with our customers. And it's taking that idea of the physical game and putting it into a digital board. Um, and as I say, it's, it's, it's designed to be quick, uh, fun, engaging, and most importantly, focused on the structure of teams and how it might support the process that the team wants to do. So just by way of example, we have a concept of a marketing team here, and the team's decided that they are they want two channels, digital and events, but we've also worked out that they might want a PR channel, so we'll put that on there. Uh, they might want a brand channel, and then we start to talk about, okay, what apps, and obviously files is going to be there because it's always there. But they've decided that, hey, it'd be great if they could have uh, their planner board accessible in their digital channel because that's how they're using, uh, that's how they're, what they're using to plan. Um, and so that ability to quickly capture that visually and people can see it placed and it's all asynchronous and that they can be watching it happen. The other thing we do is we profile the team. So we ask everyone to say, hey, from one to five, how important is it that you can collaborate beyond your organization's uh, boundaries? Five, it's critical. One, not important. So if we went five, for example, how important it is that you use Teams and its functionality for social connection within the company. That might be two. Uh, what about sensitive information? Four, and how important is it that people, other people within your organisation could discover this team and potentially join it? And we'll say, well, that's one. So what we use that profiling for is that if, if there's debate amongst whether we should make, for example, the events private or not, or whether we should uh, create a new team for a particular thing, we can reference back to that profile definition, which has been uh, shared and agreed on at the start of the game, and then just say, well, hey, we're saying that discoverability isn't important, so why are we making all of our teams public? Perhaps if we've got sensitive information, perhaps they need to be private, and we can signify a private team just through that. And the final thing is we have events, so you can really start to get fun and we have more serious events and fun events. So for example, you can create your own or here's a here's one that we didn't 
really uh, anticipate that one of the fun events is the ability to play the rats event, which is your office has been infested with rats and now everyone needs to work from home all of a sudden. Well, that just didn't happen to be rats. It was a global pandemic that did that. So you can play those events and the, the organiser can play that. And the idea there is to disrupt the thinking. So everybody will think that they've got the perfect structure. Generally, it's based on organisational structure because that's how they think or, or a file system structure. Um, so by playing those events, we can disrupt that, challenge the thinking um, and hopefully uh, land in a better spot. As I say, you run this game for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, whatever it is, how many processes and teams you want to look at. You can run it multiple times over and over again. You can snapshot the team. You can save the team for uh, the game for later. Um, then you can you take that output and you put it into our planning tool, uh, and that gives you a more detailed level of what needs to be built. And then, of course, you could take that output, load it up into provisioning and management tools. Uh, we have those as well. Um, or you can go through um, a manual build process, depending on what you want to do. So once again, just trying to keep the planning aspect and business value focus of, of deploying teams, as opposed to just saying, well, we don't have time to do it. You can do it with this game, do it really, really quick, fast, and, and hopefully make it a bit of fun as well. So that's how we plan for success. Okay, we've got everyone in teams. They're loving it. They're not just doing meetings, but they're in there. They're in their teams. They're well designed because we had our plan. They're collaborating. They're sharing information. Everything's good. But what we've, we've noticed is they're not going to the intranet anymore, or they're not going to our corporate communications channels anymore, or they're spending less time in email, for example, or not as much time in our Yammer network as they used to, which is what uh, what we've been using for to, to get to everybody. One of the challenges that systems or platforms like Teams has and Slack has the same problem is as a corporate communicator, it's very hard to get a message out to everybody. You don't know the structure. You don't have visibility of all the teams, all the channels. You don't know who, what, who's members of what. And that ability to cut through all of that and get your corporate message out um, can be very, very challenging. We're, we're hearing that in all sorts of organizations and just not, just not with Teams. Um, but one of the advantages you've got is if you're successful with our teams is that you know where your users are. They're in that application. That's where they're having their meetings. That's where they're doing, doing their stuff. So if we can get to them, then we can actually get to them really, really easily. And the final bit is what about the content authors? If they're also working in teams, they've come out of a meeting. In that meeting, it's been decided that we need to quickly publish out a communication message from the CEO about reopening offices, for example. What about if the content authors don't have to change context, go back to a, another tool, go back to the intranet? Um, why can't they do it from the same place where they're working? So for that, we have um, our platform called Live Tiles reach now this is available in teams as, as you see here it's a pinned application in my teams on my left hand side and what we've got here is some examples of the type of information you might accept, expect from a corporate communications it's really quick really easy you get full rich articles um, with all the stuff you come to expect such as likes comments bookmarking favoriting um, uh, sharing with other users etc We've got, you've got the ability to target channels. So once again, these aren't going to match to the channels that your team structure's done. These are your corporate communications channels, which I'm sure you all have. So making sure you can still target, you know, marketing, or it might be locations, offices, et cetera. And just being able to get that to your users, notifications come into this app. So if corporate comms posts that message from the CEO and it's marked as urgent, that can appear as a notification to all users via this uh, app within Teams. And it's one click away. It's literally one click uh, from anywhere in Teams, I can get to this and consume my corporate information. For the editors, the editing experience is built right in. So I can come in here and you'll see I've got three articles that are, are published. They're below the line here, nothing in draft, but let's go in and quickly create an article. I won't spend too much time. Let's choose cats because we love cats. Okay, and everything you would expect to be able to do from your corporate communications platform is all here, including keywords, including rich text formatting. Let's put that in, oh, some text. Multilingual support is built in, reader confirmation is built in. You can turn off and on, likes and comments, all those sorts of things you'd expect. Mark something as an alert. 
for three days, which signifies it is important. Uh, content expire, uh, sorry, article expiry, version control, and then we can either directly publish that because they have the rights, or we can send in for approval, and then that can go through an approval process to a author. You can see here we have an article here that's not yet approved. Come in here, and that could be approved by someone who can, and then. Our articles are now available to us, as you would expect, um, all done from within the one place in Teams. I don't think I set a channel then. Um, all done within one place in Teams, both the consumption of the corporate news as well as the production and, and author, uh, approval of that corporate news. And most importantly, that could also be appearing on your internet. So you'll still have users going there, um, but it's also available now to those in Teams. So you're not missing users and you're actually able to capture their attention while they're, they're in that application. So that's getting corporate comms cut through. Right, we're getting, we've got people working well. We have a plan. Everyone's getting value out of it. Uh, we've got our corporate communications reaching our users so they're not missing out on stuff because they're working in this, this new way of working. Um, how do we start to give them access to other stuff they need? Now, Teams obviously has um, a bunch of features such as its apps and its tabs. I don't know about your own personal experience, but I've found tabs get out of control pretty quickly. Um, and I've also found that the amount of teams I'm actually part of means I still need central access points to a whole bunch of stuff. That could be systems, could be notifications, could be data, could be a combination of all of those things. So what we're trying to do here is work out if people are in Teams, how do we avoid them constantly switching context, jumping between applications, jumping out, jumping in? If I'm, if I'm in a meeting, for example, and then someone asks a question and I need to get access to something about that, or I know there was a recent document around that, how can I get access to that without you know, jumping out of that meeting, going to another system? Um, how can I do that if I'm having a chat in Teams and I need, need to reference something really, really quickly? Um, how do we do all of that without leading that collaboration tool and being one click away? So just jumping back into my, to my demo environment, um, Live Tools Everywhere is a solution and we use this internally. Once again, it's a, it's a single click away application. It's centrally configured. So you do this for your organization. We can target these things to, to different user groups. It's all a, a single sign on to your environment. It can even be delivered on your SharePoint based intranet if, if you have one of those, or it can be delivered just straight into Teams. And it's one click away. And if you see all the stuff at my fingertips here, I have everything from information around crisis management to cr creating content for one place, which I'll show you to access to a service menu. That's classically your quick links type stuff that you might see, say, in a mega menu on an intranet. I've got my corporate news. I've got access to policies, a whole bunch of stuff. So if we just go through some of those, as an example, um, here I am in my create content. And the central configuration is determined. I can see these things. I can create news articles from here. I can do all sorts of stuff. But I can do things like travel requests. Bang, here's our form. I haven't left Teams at all. Interesting enough, this is probably a useless demo in the current climate for a travel request, but you can start to integrate business process request type information straight into this. Um, once again, that corporate news capability, let's make it available here for those who potentially aren't using that application. So here we go. This is actually SharePoint based news. So if you've already got an investment of that as your, as your news ch channel, we can bring all that together in one place and you'll see we've got a, a whole bunch of our news stories there. Let's, okay, our policies and procedures. So here's a bunch of policies I've got to do. Um, I don't have any must, oh, yep, three must read, some relevant policies. Once again, these are traditionally based, uh, on your internet, but being able to bring those together and make it available one click away for your users if it makes sense to have that information, information available. We can start to think about, well, what about other systems? Now, one thing Teams doesn't have is email. So you can't, so I don't know about what you find, but I personally find myself jumping between Teams and Outlook way too much. So once again, not trying to replace the email system, but potentially just giving you a highlights of, uh, of what's available uh, in your email or new emails come in, for example. Um, you could also have your upcoming meetings from your calendar, but that may not be uh, desirable because you've already got a calendar of Teams. So being able to configure that work out what's uh, useful for your users, configure it once, make it available. 
that start to think about notifications coming in to, uh, to your teams, whether that be notifications from people, such as these are just quick little uh, updates, for example, so I can quickly start to see and comment on a, on a really quick alert, or they might be alerts generated from a system, for example, uh, rather than, than a person. That's available to me. Let's start to bring in finding our people. Now, Teams does obviously have profile cards, sort of got organisational chart, but it can be hard to really get uh, find the people and find them accurately. So, for example, I want to know who's in our people and culture team. Here's our uh, human resource officer. I can start to see Chantelle, start to see her team, who works for her, who works for Jake. And the beauty of this particular part of the solution is it's all underpinned by our intelligent directory service, which goes and asks users for accurate information and ask them to keep it up to date so you actually have um, up-to-date information that can be useful for, for things like the directory. Now, you can see here Chantelle doesn't have an office location. If I was logged in as her, she would be regularly getting uh, asked by the system to update that and harassed and escalated if she doesn't. So once again, it's not just about here's an organisational chart, it's actually about how do we make sure that data is up to date so it's, so it's useful. Let's start to think about other systems outside. So in this case, uh, marketing's decided that it's important we have the Instagram feed. So I've just got that once again. It's all one click away in one spot. It's not a tab against a channel in a team that I can't remember where I last saw it, right? It's, it's all contextualised and all nice and simple. Elevate those process systems. So, for example, this is um, a form to log a ticket into ServiceNow. It could also be a bot, potentially. Once again, what's important to your users? How could we get to them? And it's one click away. And finally, let's start to think about the data side of things. So this is Power BI, but it could be Tableau. It could be any sort of system you want. Once again, this could be targeted. But leveraging those, those systems and assets you have and being able to deliver to, to your users where they are. And that's through the Live Tiles Everywhere uh, product. And configuring that once and being able to know that your users can be one click away. And then when they're done, they're back in and they're chatting in Teams, they're working in Teams, or they're joining meetings in Teams. So really it becoming that digital desktop uh, environment where they just go to get, to get all their stuff done. And while I'm here, I'll touch on uh, the meeting side. So, one of the things that we've been uh, noticing in our customer base, in our own organisation, and also from the statistics from, um, from Microsoft is just obviously the huge growth in meetings happening in Teams. I think the last number I saw was something like 2.7 billion minutes a day or, or something insane. Um, but they also saw 500% increase uh, in the number of recorded videos being stored in, in their stream service. One of the issues uh, we see with that is how much knowledge uh, is trapped in those videos. How many of your users go back and refer to those recordings, watch those recordings? Um, and so we've been looking at, okay, how can we untrap that? So I'm just quickly going to uh, show you a service here that we've been working on. It's with a, an alliance partner of ours, and it's all about being able to interrogate recorded meetings you have access to and be able to get a highlights reel really quickly and real time. And it's shown here, once again, integrated into live tiles everywhere, because this could be a really useful thing to be able to reference before you join another meeting, for example. So just to give you an example, I'm going to search for meetings where we've talked about Vibe, which I'm about to show you. And I want to do it by start date. And what this is doing is it's going away. It's indexed. It hasn't moved the files, but it's indexed their existence. And you can see here, I have 12 meetings where it's been referred to. And in real time, um, this service has given me, and you won't hear at your end, but a one minute highlights reel. And this is all the clips out of all of those recorded meetings I have access to where people have talked about uh, Lifetile's uh, Vibe, which is uh, one of our new services. Um, and I'm able to just watch that really quickly and at any point jump out and drop into that uh, that part of the video at the point that the clip was showing me. So once again, it's not replacing recorded videos of meetings, it's actually looking to make them a valuable, reusable knowledge asset for your organization. And it's, it's really quick, really uh, very, very powerful capabilities there. 
So we're unifying our applications and systems and teams. It's, and it's just, a, I just want to really make a, a strong point there that that could be any system that is important to your users and to your organization. So you could have a live tiles everywhere with, with one icon. You could have it with 50. I wouldn't recommend that, but you could do it. It's really about how, what can you deliver to your users one click away, contextual, so they don't have to constantly be switching back and forth from, from hopefully where they're now enjoying getting their work done in the, in the post-COVID working world. And finally, how could we leverage Teams and the fact that we do have people coming together in that digital form um, to check in on them? And this could be both point of view of wellness, um, well-being, happiness, um, but it could also be just about anything. So we were talking to a customer the other day. Uh, we've got one customer who's doing this for um, burnout um, concerns with their, their IT help desk support team. They're really worried that they're, they're overburdened and there's just too much on. So they're, uh, they're asking a daily question uh, of their 120-odd staff in that department, but they're also asking a weekly question just before they have their regional team catch-ups. And the purpose of that is to use that data to inform the team leadership on how their, their workforce is feeling about their workload currently. I uh, had another organisation that they talking about how they would like to use it for um, at the end of every week, just asking, hey, has anyone got an unforeseen issue that they need to raise? Now, if you think about that simple use case and how that's done currently in Teams, it would be done by me, for example, posting a, a, a chat question in the team, and then I'm asking people to respond to raise issues where they're identifiable. Now, that may not work well, depending on, on the, the culture, depending on the context of what I'm asking. Um, so they may not raise the issue. Whereas by simply having this service on a scheduled basis post that, and then have that information and their responses captured but not individually identifiable, is a really cool uh, feature for, or a piece of data for me to know, right, Somebody saying we've got an issue with, you know, technical project one, two, three, um, I'd better look a bit more into that, right? So literally doing momentary assessment, short, sharp. It's not trying to be a survey. Surveys are fulfill different purposes, but it's really just a check-in tool where you can capture a response from your user base. And I'll show you how simple and easy that is to do in the service and teams. So I'm going to jump in. Oh, yes, I'm back. Um, and we call it Live Tiles Vibe. And if you like what you see here, the really good news is it's, um, we've decided to make this service available for free. So I'll quickly start on what the end user sees. They're gonna come into a team and you'll see here, Lifetiles Vibes already posted, how are you feeling today? I'm, I'm bad, right up to I'm great, for example. So that's a type of question. But as a team owner, what you can do, you once you have the app in your team, you can come in and you can look at some data around that particular uh, uh, question you've been asking, you can schedule it, right? So I wanna ask, for example, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 9 a.m. Um, or I could not schedule it and just do a, a manual post when, when I deem it appropriate. I could also add new types of cards. So you see, we've got two types of basic wellness. One has a little toggle, one doesn't. So I wanna do a workload checking. And I'm going to post that. I'm going to say, um, oh, we'll just call this burnout check, for example, where you can send the questions to a channel. Uh, so I've only got one channel here, general, but we could have different channels. Uh, I could schedule it as I showed before, but I'm just going to create this card and I'm going to send it into the channel. And if I did schedule it, which is what we'd recommend, at that time, every day, the, the team would receive this little check-in, so I'm feeling reasonably productive today. I'm doing a great webinar, for example, and I can submit that. And it's not user identifiable uh, deliberately. Um, obviously, other users within this chat don't see what I've said. It, it's personal to me. Um, and it just aggregates that data centrally for the person who's decided to ask that question can then see the data roll up and, and get insights from that. And as I say, this can be about absolutely everything, project status, risk uh, issue uh, raising, um, well-being checking, um, how are you enjoying Teams? Are you finding this feature of Teams useful? That type of stuff can all be done through this service. 
We've got inbuilt templates, as you've seen there, which we'll have more of. But importantly, um, we can also work with you to produce custom cards. So, for example, if, if the language needs to be changed, you want to ask a completely different type of question, uh, we run a little um, workshop service with you. We, we build out the cards for you. You can test them with us, and then they can be pushed out to your Lifetiles Vibe instance, and you've got them available uh, to, to consume and use within your your environment. So once again, a really quick, simple way to leverage the fact that users are in teams, are working in teams, but use it to be able to check in and, and gain responses. The other final thing for any technical people uh, on the session that's important about this, those cards can be dynamic and they can both receive data to, to instigate themselves um, or they can or and or they can send data to another system. So if you start to think about using it as a as a great little momentary notifications tool, it becomes um, pretty powerful and, and pretty simple to do. So what we've covered is a lot in a very short space of time. And I want to open it up to, to discussion and questions. But where we started was, okay, so you've got teams. You've probably been forced to roll teams out faster than perhaps you, you plan to, or maybe you had aggressive plans anyway, but now at least uh, everyone's got teams. Um, what we're seeing in our customers is that most of the use of teams from a user's perspective is, hey, I'm doing videos and meetings. How do we start to really extend its purpose and the value it adds so users do um, you know, gain the biggest benefit possible from, from this technology. So we, we started with, hey, let's rapidly plan it out using our teams gain and planning tools. So once again, having, having a fun, easily delivered in a remote setting way of getting business users to think about how they use the tool as opposed to just think about using it in terms of features and functions. Once we've got a plan, or if we are, if we do have really good use, how do we start to solve some of the problems that we're seeing in a lot of our customers? So as I say, we're, we are seeing this issue of corporate comms cutting through. How do they get to the eyeballs? So we showed you Lifetiles Reach and being able to just have that corporate communications experience uh, embedded into your team's experience one click away. We then start to do that with Lifetiles Everywhere for a whole bunch of other things, other services, other data, other systems, stuff that might currently or traditionally have been delivered by your intranet. Maybe your intranet is not seeing it, uh, such high use at the moment. So how do we start to bring those in so people still get value from them and we, we avoid them constantly having to switch in and out of different applications? Uh, I touched on quickly, how do you unlock the value of your meetings that are being recorded? If you do have a, if you do have a lot of recorded meetings and you see potential value in that, I'd love to have a more detailed chat with you. Uh, about what we're doing there. And finally, how can we start to engage our users, particularly while we still do have um, a significant percentage of work from home? I know our organisation, even though we, we are slowly opening back offices, we are still looking to work from home as, as much as possible. So how can you use that to use Lifetiles Vibe to check in with your employees, get feedback from them really, really simply and quickly, as opposed to sending them an email outside of Teams with a link that they click on and go to another system to do something. So doing it really short, sharp, and, um, and in the moment for those users to engage with. If any of those you think could be uh, a useful uh, discussion for your organization and, and how you're going with Teams um, and how you might be able to extend it, its value into your organization, um, we're offering complimentary workshops, uh, no, no uh, uh, what do you say, commitment required. We can run the Teams game with you. We can talk you through Lifetiles everywhere. We can talk you through everything we're showing, or we can just have a discussion about what you're trying to do with Teams and, and what we're seeing, seeing out there in the world. Uh, and to do that, just that URL there, lifetiles.nyc forward slash teams dash support dash services. There's a form on that page if you fill that in uh, one of our, my lovely colleagues will be in touch and we'll be able to have a chat and uh, yeah, just see what, you, see what you're up to and see where we can help. And that's uh, a very short, sharp presentation. And I just thought now, if we open it up to conversations, um, I think we have a question from Neil. Uh, can Live Tiles Reach also post corporate messages to a SharePoint intranet? Uh, yes, Neil, technically can. And uh, we've actually got a customer, a freight logistics customer, who's looking to do exactly that. Um, they've got Teams use, but they haven't seen a, a huge uptake in it. And their intranet uh, landing page is actually the one that um, uh, is where they want to direct those um, 
those things too. So absolutely that can be done. Both live tiles reach and live tiles vibe uh, can do that as well. Is the internet dead? <laughs> um, I don't think it's dead. Um, look, we're, there's some practical things we've seen. We've seen customers who simply their internet hasn't been accessible. Um, and that's been because it hasn't been in the cloud and the VPN keeps falling over. It's literally as simple as that. And so they've had to scramble to work out how they get uh, some of that corporate stuff to their users still. Um, I think its role does change a little bit. I, I, I personally feel that the intranet is that one central spot you try and direct everyone to uh, is probably uh, evolving and changing. Um, I think that once, if you're successful in your organisation of getting people into something like Teams and that's where they go to do their work, and if you think about a lot of intranets, it's not necessarily where you do your work, it's where you go and get information that supports work in, in many ways, um, I think that will evolve its use. And what does that mean? Well, to our mindset, there, there will always be a web-based uh, access to, to stuff, such as an intranet, but it's also the platform of services such as content for corporate news, um, such as policy, procedure, governance, and management. That's that's critical. You, you're going to struggle to do that in teams at a, at a enterprise level um, but using those capabilities of what intranets do but providing them as services that can then be exposed into other contexts and that's really what live tiles everywhere is about um, is about being able to say you know what just because you're not going through the browser to our intranet homepage anymore doesn't mean you should miss out on all this important stuff that we make available and that, that you need to do your job um, and yes, Neil, live tiles everywhere can you yeah, absolutely do a service desk. Um, absolutely, it can be done through a number of ways. Could be exposing data, uh, could be exposing reports, or if, uh, bots is another one that we've seen a, a lot of people do uh, for such as ticket raising or checking status as a ticket. So you're not limited in, in that. Chin, I, I hope I answered your question there. Please respond back and please feel free to come off mute if you want to talk, everyone. It's not a live event, so you can actually talk to me. If you, if you wish. Any other questions or any thoughts, comments? Happy to, we've still got about 10 minutes, to be honest. So if anyone wants to just chat about or ask me any questions about what we're seeing with teams, more than happy to spend the time and, and share the thoughts of, of what we're seeing in our, in our customer base globally. Um, this is Nikki. Um, we previously had live tolls out um, a little while ago uh, at to um, just run it through live tiles for the intranet and also chatbot. Um, so within a space of a couple of years, um, what has been the updates that live tiles have made and what is uh, planned for the future? Oh, a big question. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess those of who may have heard of us before, um, our original product was all around building better SharePoint experiences with a thing called Live Tiles Design. I'm not sure if that's what you saw, Nikki, but that was our very first product and at the time was you know, incredibly successful and had a very fast growth. A lot of customers around the world were using it to build out that, that much better experience on, on top of SharePoint. Since that time, we've obviously seen Microsoft improve its offerings through, through Modern, which is fantastic. Um, we still absolutely have customers using that um, on top of Modern, where they want to go beyond the, uh, the limited branding uh, possibility. So we have some customers where the brand and what they can do with it is exceptionally important, but they also want to leverage uh, the, the benefits of, of SharePoint Modern. Um, but what we've done in recent times is we've looked to really uh, solidify our enterprise capabilities in intranet. So um, our intelligent intranet platform is re really that one that can scale to very large environments. So, you know, the likes of customers around the world with 150,000 active users and, and those types of environments. But it also um, added capabilities around, you know, governance, policies and procedures management, um, uh, corporate communications capabilities, et cetera. So that was one area we really focused um, some, some time on. Um, in terms of what uh, we, uh, Intelligent Directory is a core part of the platform, and this is that service I referred to earlier, um, 
that proactively goes and checks in with users about their user profiles for both on-premise Active Directory, but also Azure Active Directory, and in the future, other uh, HR systems as well, and just tries to get users to keep them up to date themselves as opposed to being relying on IT to do it all the time. So that information is actually useful, whether that be finding people, targeting content and data to, to people, workflow processes. We just, we found that many, many organizations have grand visions of where they want to get to with personalization or contextualizing information, but it falls over because they just simply do not have a complete and accurate data set. Of, of their employees. So, so we invested time uh, to, to address that and it's a critical part of, of the platform. Um, and what you've seen today is really where are we going in the future? It's about still supporting that intranet capability and, and doing it as, as well as anybody else can and supporting what customers need to do there. Um, providing flexibility in how you do that. So still having those that design capability, but combining that with the enterprise features. And as I say, we have customers right now who are, who are doing those things really, really nicely. Um, but then also, it's, you know, adapting to the, the world that's, that's occurring and occurred much faster than we could have predicted because of, because of COVID and really trying to provide the end user with a lot simpler experience, regardless of where they're doing their work. Right, so that life, the vision for lifetiles everywhere is not to just be in teams, but it's to be anywhere that makes sense for a user. So you now we're working on some things in Slack, for example. We're working with things for for browsers. We're working for things for Outlook, um, mobile experiences. The critical piece here being it doesn't all. It's not all separate apps. It's you you configure it centrally. You work out your rules and how you want to target it. You can target it better because you know better stuff about your people. To your end users, they're just getting the things they need. That that's ultimately our vision as a company is that we just make the complex technology as simple as possible for the people who use it. Um, and yeah, it's it's really everything we're doing is around that. And then infusing artificial intelligence under the covers, but not just having artificial artificial intelligence for the sake of it. Uh, we see a lot of other companies just throwing AI at problems that we just don't think they actually solve anything, right? And and also making sure that AI is, is what it's actually solving allows your staff to get their jobs done easier and hopefully enjoy work more as opposed to companies who deploy AI to replace people. We're, we're not about that. Does that sort of answer your question? Yep, great. Thank you. Yep. Well, not sure if we had any other questions. I think that was it. Uh, Neil, I assume I've answered your questions. And Chin, I hope I've answered your question. It was a big question. <laughs> I didn't really touch on Cortex, but yeah, we are uh, we're very excited about what Microsoft's doing doing around Cortex. And, and we think it just adds to that in, intelligence angle of, of contextualizing information better, basically. Uh, you might want to let some people know what Project Cortex is. <laughs> Yeah, so Project Cortex for everyone, it's, it's a new thing for Microsoft, which is really an evolution of what they were doing with um, uh, Delve originally, to be honest, but it's really using infusing AI into content and building relationships between content and people. Um, encourage you to, to check it out. It's, um, it's not quite out yet, but it's, it's pretty impressive stuff, and, and we just see it as another part of the big Microsoft engine that will drive experiences that the bit's going to be, well, how do you get that into the hands of your users so it actually helps them get stuff done? Um, and, yeah, so you could expect to see think Project Cortex-related stuff appearing in Lifetiles everywhere and our corporate communications capabilities are uh, pretty soon after it, it being available. Um, I think, is there any other questions while you've got me? Well, we've still got about five minutes if everyone's... Just any any question at all about teams, about what's working for you or not. Um, yeah, it doesn't have to be about what I've what I've shown. Anything at all? No. I think we're good then. Um, so I will give everyone a few extra minutes in the day, which is uh, I think Craig, we're uh, we're all okay. So I just, once again, just thank you all for your time. Hopefully it was something that uh, sparked your interest there. And if there was, please reach out via that URL or find me on LinkedIn. And uh, it's Simon Tyrrell, T-Y-R-R-E-L-L. -R -R -E -L -L. 
uh, reach out and we can have a chat and uh, see how we might be able to help or, or at least have a have a chat about how things are going. So thank you all for your time and, uh, and thank you to the M365 people for putting all this together. Fantastic. Mm-hmm.